R. Gervais, S. Merchant, K. Pilkington. With a little bit of, I know you're, I know for a fact, uh, that Steve is getting a little bit sick of Carl's attitude. Oh, his attitude's appalling. I quite like it though, because it's straight away friction and he's sort of like, you know. To be fair, I genuinely don't think I'm the culprit in this. I think I come in and I just ask him a simple request. Yeah. And immediately on my back. Whinging, moaning, whining. I, I, I mean, I don't know if there's any evidence. Well, it's funny to you say that actually, because, uh, support in a survey, complaints. yeah, it came out this, this week. It's, uh, quite extensive. Um, Mancunians take more sick, day sick days than anyone else. Mancunians take more sick days than workers in any other city in Britain and Ireland, according to Manchester-based employment firm. Survey, uh, by Peninsula found that employees in Manchester take 11 sick, day sick days per year, whereas closest rivals, Edinburgh and Dublin, um, take an average of nine. Liverpool, Newcastle, Birmingham, Cardiff, only eight. Is so, Reading mentioned there or No, Bristol? it's not even in, it's not even in there. They don't sure. take days off. Um, London is only, only seven. So, so the point is, I mean, I don't think you can take anything from it, but if you're an employer and you had a Mancunian and a Liverpudlian and they were equal on everything else, but you really couldn't afford them to be away, Liverpudlian's gonna probably be away for eight days. Sure. Mm. The man's going to be away for eleven, phoning in sick, and so know. what can you? I mean, just well, analyzing the data there. How, what would you extrapolate from that? Um, I, I, I really don't know. I mean, call if you've got any clues, or email us in if you've got any. I don't know why they. I, I think maybe. I don't know. Man I mean, Union's just, I, mean, I don't really know many people from Manchester. Well, I so. know one, but I know he was off sick because he put on wet trousers and he got. He got cold, I think. Yeah. Well, he just said he was. Yeah. Didn't come in for. Yeah. Um, he left early as well once. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but I don't know. I mean, that's the survey. I don't know. I mean, it's evidence because it's statistics. So there yeah, you it's go. Guaranteed evidence that that's so, like proof. Any any thoughts on that, Ricky Dot Gervais? At XFM dot co dot UK. I mean, you're from oddly enough, you're from Manchester. Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts yeah. on on that? On what? Sorry. No, no I was on the survey. Oh. Uh, wasn't really listening. Sure. What well, man? Man, take off more sick days. They call in sick. I mean, presumably spuriously. Yeah. I mean, because it, it's, it, they've got the same body, they're exactly. biologically the same, so... Uh, so they're obviously uh, making up their luck. Yeah, you know, some, some of the days, maybe the, the, the three extra they're making up. Yeah, they're moaning. Um, probably because we work a lot harder than the others, so we're tired, so you're sick, so you need time off. Probably. Well, probably. Likely. I mean, the Scousers, to be honest, yeah, take them on, let them work in your office. <laughs> but, you know, how many computers are gonna go missing? Right, that... So offensive. Is offensive. Right. This is a, this is a, no, this is a survey that proved you just made that up. You just carried on the myth that Liverpudlians thieve. <laughs> now that that is just that's not true. That is not true. Well, well it's not. Well, some of them do. There's, there's been no survey that you're more likely to thieve if you're from Liverpool than if you're in Manchester. So that that hasn't been proven yet. So mm. all all I've got is the evidence from a survey of I think three and a half thousand people. Yeah. It's proof that people from Mancunians take off more sick days. It's FM one hundred four point nine. This is April Come She Will by Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel, April Come She Will. A lovely, lovely love song there. Uh, the ex list was all about sort of like sexy songs because of uh, death of uh, Barry White, of course. And uh, Carl and Steve having a little argument. Steve said, Well, there are such things as sexy songs, of course. Carl said, I can't understand it. I can't understand it. How can something be sexy? How can you woo one with a song? Steve went, Well, you don't woo one with it, you just put it on in the background. Carl said, Stick the telly on. Stick the telly on. I love that. You don't it's believe just... there's any such thing as a sexy song, is that right? I, I, I don't think it can get you in the mood. You know <laughs> what I mean? Right. <laughs> You're, you're either in with a chance or you're not. I don't think it matters what, what song you put on. Well, I don't think it ups your chances. I don't think if no, it you does, take- it does. If, if you put Channel 5 on on a Friday night, right, see a little bit of that action, gets anyone going. <laughs> it's worked for me and that's all what's what, on, what, what I'm saying. What's on when pets go mad? No, what's no, on? you know, like, uh, what? I don't know the titles of them, I don't, I don't look at the titles, but- What's the show with Chris Moyles? Uh, Do you mean the kind of erotic thrillers? Yeah, yeah, put, put one of them on, that's, that gets you going a bit. <laughs> what, what what's, I might be tired and that, but- what 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 does the, what, is, what does the woman go go? Oh, that's an idea. <laughs> hey, that's well, an they're, idea. They're normally they're normally called something like illegal briefs, <laughs> and they're normally about you know they're normally about some kind of uh, female solicitor who's uh, defending a guy who may or may not be a li uh, a killer, yeah. but maybe in a former life they were lovers. It's always some nonsense like that, and presumably there's normally some gruesome murders. So how is that getting you in the mood? It's plot development. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, the narrative. Oh, <laughs> I love narrative. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that's a lovely twist. I've got the horn. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Brilliant. So, uh, if you're from Manchester, sorry about that. I mean, it is true. We aren't, we aren't making that up. We weren't doing a, a stupid stereotype like Carl did with living problems. It's just a survey that I'm keen to just take off more sick days. And I, but they might be genuine. They might be sort of an iller, iller people, or it might just be people who are in, in Manchester go, oh, I can't be bothered to go to work. It's rubbish. Whereas if you're in London, you go, I can't wait to go to work. What a lovely, what a lovely place this is. It's a great job, don't you? Great job, don't you? Yeah. Um, uh, Rick, I know you're always looking, uh, just to keep you kept abreast of, you know, new developments in yeah. music, what's happening. Yeah. I don't know if you've got any plans this evening, but you might want to pop along to the Hope and Anchor in Islington. <laughs> Why? Where, uh, playing tonight, um, Restless Diesel. Please Hello. welcome to the stage. Restless Diesel. I mean, we've talked about it before, band names where you just have to imagine you're supporting U2, yeah. Wembley Stadium. It can never happen. Please welcome to the stage. And Restless he comes on and Diesel. And the first song, he goes, uh, thanks, because great band before us, Restless Diesel. You hear a lot more of them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it so, won't uh, happen, will it? Sure, they're a great band. I think. What's the tax on that? Fiverr in, is it? <laughs> 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 it's not, uh, not telling us actually, yeah, but uh, yeah, to put them in the open anchor, maybe tell us uh, how Restless Diesel was tonight. Yeah, just, uh, call in. Maybe, uh, call in on, uh, Christian Show Monday, just tell us how Restless <laughs> Diesel were. We can make that a regular feature. <laughs> Uh, now, what's coming up on today's show? Really? Well, we listen, got... we got all the usual favourites. We got, uh, and some new ones. We got monkey news. That's sorted. Carl told me. People are guaranteed monkey he news. He called in. He said, I've got some monkey news. Brilliant. He's done that. I have to make sure. And then we got that. We've got, um, some great tunes. I've got a great song from Tupac, some Cat Stevens, some Jimmy Webb, some Thin Lizzy. Can I surprise you with something from Aerosmith? Brilliant. And a little treat from Evan Dando. We're, we're quite up. rocky today, aren't we? Uh, there's, there's a threat that there won't be rockbusters. Good. Uh, <laughs> that's no threat. <laughs> but, um, we can Great bring news. back Educating Ricky. Oh. I mean, cause it's sort of like seasonal, isn't it, our show? We don't want to, it's not like Ant and Dex takeaways on all through the year. Yeah. They go away for a few weeks and we get something else like Ian Wright's, you know, yeah. friends like these or something. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, so, uh, maybe Rockbusters, maybe not. Rockbusters um, on hiatus, but Educating Ricky always. That, that's not coming up. And, uh, I'll tell you what, Jane's Addiction just because they oh, rock as well, don't oh, they? Oh, brilliant. XFM 104.9. Excellent, Ricky Jimmy. <laughs> Jane's Addiction, Just Because on XFM 104.9, broadcasting from London where people prefer to only be off sick when they actually are ill. Sure. Um. Yeah, I don't think I've ever taken a day off sick. Mm. Except when I had that terrible, terrible, terrible tonsillitis. Is that when you went home, stayed yeah. with your mum and dad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that a problem? Where's back to health? No, I'm not saying it's a problem. Where's back to health? <laughs> yeah, got loving family. So sue me. Uh, what do you make of <laughs> that? <laughs> <laughs> the antagonism and piss taking is just like, oh god, three blokes in a pub. And there's people listening, I can't yeah. <laughs> Are there? <laughs> um, Carl, what do you make of London? Because you, you often say you, anyway, you'd much rather be up north. Well, he wouldn't, think. or he'd go. Well, this is why, you know, he constantly says he's chosen to, to live there. here. You've lived here for years. You've got a flat here. No. You, no. I chose to come here because I, I was offered a job that was good money. Yeah. I wouldn't have come here if there was no job. So you prefer to be somewhere where there's a good like job, so you've chosen like to live here. here. I don't like being here, though. What? Well, no, but you can leave. I can, to what? Well, exactly! So you've chosen to stay somewhere that's better for you. It's not better for me. Well, it's making me ill, I'm not sleeping. Well, you say, you say you're ill, I think you call in ill, but I don't think you are. But I mean, <laughs> are there any stats to prove that? Well, yeah, cause it, sure. you know, it'd be el of the eleven days that he calls in sick, I reckon yeah. probably seven of them are genuine. Oh, I'd love it if you drop down dead tonight. Honestly, I'd love it. <laughs> if you drop down dead tonight, you'd yeah. love it. Why, Why are you don't? sleeping? What, well, you're feeling ill now, are you? I That's know, funny, I you weren't feeling ill earlier, but you read that, and you're suddenly ill. I'm run down. Well, you should take a holiday. Oh, oh yeah, I'm you've just had about eight in the last six <laughs> months. <laughs> Oh, God! Why are you run down? Why are you run down? Yeah, what have you done? You sit in a, a little air-conditioned office. I haven't got time to tell you. Let's move on. Let's <laughs> get on with stuff. What have we got anyway? Because we, uh, we didn't have a chance to meet up this week. Me and Ricky could have done, but you said you were busy, Steve, yeah, so yeah. that's yeah. probably why you don't get run down. But mm -hmm. finishing work at about four o'clock. <laughs> no. So, I, c I, could have, I, could, I could have had the meeting, but uh, we gave you a time and you suddenly decided with very little notice that you couldn't make it. So, uh, make it meetings and that. Oh, oh. So <laughs> what have we got then? What have we got? It's twenty past one. What have we got? We're on till three. Well, we've been talking. We've been doing well. We've been playing some great rock and roll. We've been playing some lovely songs. We've, we've told them, we've explained the survey just for employees. Be careful. Yeah. We've, you know, put that out there. We've put a shout out there. People know I you're- I mean, would you say, would you say 
say it was probably safest if you are an employer to never employ Mancunians. Well, would I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far fun? because you see that's only an average. So I imagine some Mancunians, like you know Londoners, uh, you know, a nice. Um, reliable people, it's probably just a, a few bad eggs that m throw the stats up sure. a little bit, you know, people that would go, I'm not coming in today, I'll put on some wet trousers. Sure. All right, stay in bed, yeah. stay in bed. Yeah. You still got them on? <laughs> yeah. Well, pop them off, <laughs> yeah. put them on the radiator and go to bed with a little duvet. <laughs> That'd be the best thing to do. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, all right, Carl? Yeah. Why, what's your attitude? Is it because you're tired? Yeah. Well, why are you tired, though? You weren't saying that watching those Channel 5 films again, were you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, we were, me and Steve were having a little meeting yesterday over lunch about, you know, planning stuff for the show, and, uh, Gary Kemp came up to me, started having a little chat about old times, and, uh, I went, oh yeah, as he went away, Steve said, right, think of this, he said, Rick, don't take this the wrong way, remember that sentence, don't take this the wrong way, so there's a right way and a wrong way, I could have taken this comment, he went, nodded to sort of Gary Kemp and went, he's aged better than you. I went, well, how could I take that the wrong way? Yeah, it's uh, not offensive. No. Well, the, the point is this. He, he doesn't, because he didn't know me 20 years ago, so he's actually saying, Rick, don't take this the wrong way, he looks better than you do. Yeah, well, he does. But why say that, Carl? What? Did you, did you really say that? Yeah, although, can I just get, just backtracking for a second, I love the fact you said you bumped into Gary Kemp and you reminisced about old times. What old times did you share with Gary Kemp? Well, no, Kemp? he came up and said, did we do the pops together? And I went, no, I did razzmatazz. He said, oh, we did razzmatazz. I think he was thinking, had he ever met me before? But he, he, he hadn't, because we hadn't, that's what I meant. Yeah. 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 And, uh... But if you had to make an objective analysis... I, I wouldn't, I think that's out of order. Sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, you're always slagging me off, but apparently yeah, you no, can't no, do, well, can't make a value judgment on something else. No. On, on oh, what? Because you're, you know, you're morally all over the place. You don't know, you, you know, you don't know where you're coming or going. Yeah. So yeah. you should hear what I say about you, behind your back. So, are you? Would you say you're better looking now than you were, or <laughs> than I'm what? W would you say you're better looking now than you were than I was when? Well, like, like, you know, have you aged well? Yes. You've aged well. Yeah, I've kept my looks. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of Bit of Evan Dana, this would be lovely, yeah. Look for sunshine to burn in. Radiohead, go to sleep. That's good, isn't it? On XFM 104.9. <laughs> Brilliant. No, great, great DJing, there. Well, I've heard it before. Good, isn't it? Yeah. No, it was good. It was very good. It was very good. Um, I was just watching, uh, Cable TV, I do a lot of that, and, um, there's an advert I've noticed. It reminded me of, um, the sort of adverts you used to see when I was a kid. It's one of those attempts to kind of educate young people. But doing the youth. it in the, Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's on MTV, but it's one of those things where it's clearly been made by people who are in their mid forties. Who have never been cool. Who have never been cool. Yeah. Who've been working really hard to get into TV all yeah. their lives. And, uh, and now are trying to appeal to, you know, funky and possibly wayward young people. Yeah. And it's kind of- Nerdy wows. Yeah, exactly. And it's, uh, it's a kind of, uh, stunning model, and two of her stunning model friends. But they're just a couple of average girls, you know, sure. going about their business. And, uh, you know, it says something like, um, it's all shot very funkily, like a kind of, you know, lock, stock and two smoking barrels kind of thing. And, uh, it's a girl, and she's just grooving along with her friends, and it's yeah. kind of like, the, the captions are things like, you know, Isabella's 17. She's cool, she's quite funky, she's got these great friends, and they're sort of hanging out and laughing. And, uh, she just pops into a tattoo parlor. Sure. Why not? Her friends are like, what are you doing? But yeah. she just goes in, you know, she has a tattoo done, and it sort of says, she's wild, she's crazy. You know, she lives life as she sees it. She takes every day as it comes. She's not tied down or anything. Da -da 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 -da. She doesn't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. So and it just says, don't smoke cigarettes. Cool. If you think she's if you cool. think all this is cool, then, then you'll probably won't want to take cigarettes. Exactly. If you want to be cool, yeah, then like don't. Isabella or whatever. Except the is. thing with that is that people watching that, the 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 youth watching that, will go, well, Bill at my school, he's he smokes and he's cool. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this is the problem with it. Yeah. It's, that it's not that the impulse is wrong. The the message is fine. It's just this thing. I don't. I can't imagine those things ever working with you, with young people, no. with youths. It's like when you see, when, you know, what was it? What, what it will do is that you, you'll get a lot of 13 and 14 year olds sneaking out and getting a tattoo. <laughs> exactly. So the parents be going, I'd rather she smoke. Exactly. She might give that up yeah, sometimes. No, That's her life. She's got a spider's web on her face now for the rest of her life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But it's, often, it's like, you ever remember that thing when they tried to get people, young people to vote? Do you remember that? Was it Rock the Vote? Was it called oh, Rock the Vote? Was it? was it people like Billy Bragg and yeah. some people kind of... Yeah. I just, I, I don't know who that appeals to. I don't know, 
you know, <laughs> some youth there, he's kind of smashing up a bus shelter, yeah. throwing bricks at old people. Goes, oh, Billy, 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 was that Billy Bragg? <laughs> Billy Bragg, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't, I don't believe it ever, I think it was Nick Hucknall was another one. <laughs> What's that, Nick? Oh, dear. Well, um, I, I remember the ones where you just, if, if you're, uh, if you're gonna go off with a stranger, your cat went, well, don't. Yeah. Ask mummy first. Yeah. And I remember, well, I, I was t t trying to jump in cars left, right and centre, but my cat, <laughs> exactly. when I was like five or six, would go, <laughs> and yeah. I go, good point. Yeah. He, you're right, he could be a nutter. But I seem to remember the, the, the Charlie's, the Charlie says, it was Charlie says, wasn't it? Yeah. Charlie says. Charlie says. I always find them really unnerving. He lived in that really eerie kind of world where you never really well, saw anyone. Yeah, but it, it was yeah. very kind of, it was very eerie, it wasn't very kind of, no, but they hadn't spent a lot of money on the cartoon, no. <laughs> have they? No. But it was, I always got the sense with him that he was probably really quite lonely. But I, well, I like the fact is that, and that he had a cat and he was so talk. pleased, but well, by the time I came out, they'd gone off and I missed the picnic, but so Mummy was so pleased that I'd asked her, she gave me <laughs> an apple. No, I think And she Charlie said, got something he liked, he gets a fish, yeah. right? I was thinking, an apple. No, I seem to remember it being that, um, I get an apple anyway, get me some <laughs> sweets. Yeah. Or a tattoo. I always thought there was a con when your parents got you, um, some clothes you needed for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. not falling for that. <laughs> I'd go, look, I'm getting the clothes anyway. I want battling tops. But the Charlie says, I seem to remember when, when they were, they asked him to go off for the picnic, by yeah. the time he'd asked mum because she was on the phone, yeah. I don't know who she was chatting to in the middle of the day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the kids had gone. One of her, and I seem to one remember of her that, clients. <laughs> exactly. I seem to remember, <laughs> I seem to remember that, he, he said, don't worry, it was fine because mum took him and Charlie on a picnic. Not as good. Who'd rather go, uh, with your mates, <laughs> yeah. or with your mum on a picnic? And your cat. And your cat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, I oh, think they were fun. Fun. This Scotch egg stinks of fish. Well, I had to bring it for Charlie. Don't bring raw fish in the picnic basket. <laughs> I think it's those, they weren't friends of his, they were just local kids. You go, let's go and, let's go and ask that weirdo with the cat <laughs> who wants to come down the park. Let's go and ask the weirdo who thinks the cat can think talk, can talk yeah. and then run away when he goes <laughs> to ask his mum. When he goes off to ask his mum, they're just going, yeah, oh, yeah. ask your mum, ask yeah, your mum. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, hiya. Alright, we're the local lads, the cool local lads, we smoke, we got tattoos. Um, do you wanna come and play with some puppies in the disused mine? Um, ask your mum first. <laughs> yeah. Quick run. Exactly. Look, he's talking to the cat, look, he's talking he to the cat. <laughs> they were just round the corner spying on him. <laughs> <laughs> they were just laughing, there was no picnic. <laughs> Did you ever go on a picnic, Carl? It was, was there places to go in Manchester, or was it like yeah, quarry yeah. land, mostly? Uh, the problem with those, uh, <laughs> those adverts, like when I was growing up, they'd sort of give you ideas, because remember the Charlie's one, yeah. right, and we were on holiday, <laughs> right, and I met these two lads who were knocking about with like mates and that, <laughs> and that advert came on, and we thought it'd be a good idea to wind his mam up, because this advert had just been on saying, you know, kids are going missing in Wales, right? Yeah. So we said, oh, this would be a good laugh. We put the kid in the wardrobe, his mam came back from shopping, we said, oh, he's gone missing, we haven't seen him for hours. That's terrifying. I know. That's How old you? How old you? About 13. And what was his mum? She must have been, she must have been she, she was, yeah. yeah, she was going mad and that's when we thought, oh god, we've, we've gone, will we say anything? Will we pretend we don't know where he is? Oh, in the wardrobe, yeah. he'd suffocated. Yeah. That's yeah. horrible, Carl. I know, but Such it's a just what thing. you do, isn't it? It's just what you do. Well, no, you do. What do you mean? It's just well, what you do. I, what was it? Was he in the wardrobe? Was he listening to this? Why didn't he go, mum, it's alright, when he heard her crying? No, she wasn't crying, she was just panicking and like, yeah. screaming a little bit and that. <laughs> uh, screaming a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and that, okay, we tell her when the screaming starts. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And then, uh, what's the other thing? Like, uh, on the same, like, you know, the, all this was going on when I was growing up. And, um, one time we're on holiday. <laughs> and my mum says, right, if you're going on the beach, it's a big beach. Um, but, you know, if you're going to go out and play there, I need to know where you are. So where are these bells? bells? <laughs> <laughs> well, I this where this cowbell went, you know? She <laughs> gave me a balloon. Good idea. A balloon. a balloon, and it just, uh, you know, sort of attached to my arm, so wherever I was playing in the sea and that, you can see the balloon and that. Brilliant. Uh, but then the problem was, <laughs> everyone else thought that's a good idea, oh. and it was just like loads of kids with balloons and that. Oh, I ruined it. So that, that didn't work. Yeah. That's a, been that, sure. been that idea. <laughs> when did, didn't, weren't you in a car park once? Oh no, I, it was New Year. And, uh, it, we were all gathering up, you know, like in Trafalgar Square at New Year, everyone gathers and they have a big kind of party and stuff. Well, in Bristol, they do something very similar on a <clears throat> smaller scale. And I was there one New Year, I was with my friends, and, uh, I was, I, for some reason, I picked up a balloon during the evening, you know, I don't know where I got it from, but I was holding this balloon. And these girls came up to me and I thought, yeah, nice, it's nice, you know, maybe a little New Year kiss. <laughs> they come up, they said, uh, hey, are you gonna be here for, uh, for a while? And I said, well, yeah, yeah, I probably will. They said, it's just that we've arranged to meet back at you at midnight. 
I, what do you tall. mean? Because I was so tall I had a balloon. <laughs> I was towering above everyone else. I said, I said, I said, I said what? I said, we're going to meet back at you at midnight. <laughs> this, this is, they said, don't worry, you can go about your business because we can see you wherever you are. This is where Nelson's column is. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> No, this is in Bristol. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Right. yeah. And, um, uh, and so, uh, uh, so I'm sort of wandering around, and then at midnight, they, they, uh, the, these two girls turned up again, and some of their, these lads come and meet them, and, uh, they're sort of laughing and joking, and I'm thinking, oh, they're probably gonna invite me back to a party. I watched them get in a cab. They went off, they had a wild night. Um, but then definitely. I did have a balloon, so it was a great new year for me. <laughs> I did have a balloon! Oh! Do so we have a little bit of, uh, bit of Tupac? Uh... Yeah, if you want. Yeah. yeah. There's a great lyric in this. It's, it's uh, pitching me rolling, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end, he starts so saying about, um, uh, look at me now, I've, I'm, you know, drinking Remy and I'm in a Rolls Royce. And he goes, oh yeah, I forgot the DA. Can she see me from here? Can you see me ho? And I think that he's like district attorney turning on the radio and Tupac yeah. going around going, can that ho see me? She's going, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see you. Yeah. It's brilliant. Two pack. I'll tell you what, we should get rolling. <laughs> Rock busters. No. All right. No. Well, he has done it. He just said that he was worried about it because we said it's the last one. What do you think, Carl? I just don't think. We, I mean, can I just say now, Carl? Seriously, I'm only responding to what we're getting on the email, which is people do not want rockbusters. Mm -hmm. yeah. They really. There's one guy here. Who is? He says um, it's James Pooley. He says he's preempted Carl by giving my answers to this week's quiz. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what the clue would be, but his answer is no van ear, Nirvana. Yeah, good, no van ear. Yeah, uh, that'd be, that'd be sounds like one. Number two, he's just guessed. It's, I don't know again what the clue would be, but the answer is kid creosote. Yeah, that's good. That that's would a be typical rival. Rival. That is brilliant. That's a better game. And the last one is Harry Seacum. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. So I mean, maybe we should reverse it so people yeah. just then, <laughs> and, you know, and we have to come up with the, yeah. with, the with the clue for them. You and we and we win the prizes. Yeah. Did you even have you got prizes ready as well? So I have. But... Oh, I feel sorry for him now. We what the prizes would have been. I'd rather just give them away to the first person to email in. <laughs> <laughs> have to go through the torrent of Oh God! Buses. Look at Carl's face. I wish you. Could... Oh, can't we get this on telly just for Carl's face? Which what? Hey, I tell you what we could do, Steve. Uh huh. You know, like Smiley Miley, and that used to take the Radio One Roadshow out. Oh man, that would be amazing. Come on, should we take it out? Hello, Bournemouth. Yeah, how many miles have I done? Don't care. No, <laughs> exactly. Should we do this? How many miles have we done? Well, XFM's down the road. Yeah. One. Yeah. <laughs> should we take it out the road just so they can see Carl Pilkington? To be fair though, I mean, you're not really keen to leave W1, are you? Well, would, we wouldn't. Right, so where where exactly would we take the road show? We'd Into do it outside. Outside the building? Yeah. Right, okay. And what it's, would we it's do? It's called a road show because it's in the road, and I imagine, right. isn't it? And we'd give away t-shirts? Throw away, throw in t-shirts, and then we'd have a Any band. We'd have, well, we'd have, um, band playing. What was that band playing tonight? Uh, um, I forget, something Diesel, was it? Yeah. See, instantly forgettable. I mean, that was my <laughs> point, really. <laughs> we could have them on. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'd get a couple of celebrity pals down. Someone from, uh, Big Brother 2. <laughs> that would be ideal. Well, uh, Josh, that other, the other little gay fella. <laughs> yeah. He'd come on, just wave. Yeah. I'm beginning to like the idea. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant, yeah. So, we'll have Josh. Something Diesel, we're playing the Bull and Gates now, whatever <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Right, we'll, I'll throw out some t-shirts. Yeah. And then, uh, Carl, Carl will do a live Rockbusters. Yeah? Well, I don't know, do you want it? Um, I, th I just think that ruins it slightly. It would just bring the whole afternoon down, Rick, I think. We'd get it sponsored by someone. Yeah? Um, no? Well, I'm just trying to no, inject it, a bit of... Read the prizes, what they would have done. There's a, there's a PlayStation game here. Uh, oh. I guess it's maybe not been released yet. It's a little demo of that. Uh, what's this? The American Song Poem Anthology. I don't exactly know what that is again, but lots of songs on there. And a couple of compilations, arbitrary compilations. The Club Anthems compilation, the best summer holiday album ever. Wow. Well, oh, there you, again. you certainly sold it to me, Steve. The best air guitar album again. Brilliant. And an old edition of Only Fools and Horses. So, you really haven't put the effort into the prizes, Carl. So, if that's the prizes, if that's the whole point of the competition, and they're the best prizes you could conjure up. In God's name, how bad are the clues this week? That's why he doesn't want you to do it, Carl. Alright, we won't, we won't bother. We get it. Doesn't matter. Good. Excellent. Well, that's resolved. Brilliant. That's excellent. Brilliant. Um, what we have got, though, is Educating Ricky, haven't we? Well, another one of my little things. Oh, it's brilliant, then. So how long's this gonna last before you wanna get ditched there? Well, we'll see. A couple of weeks. <laughs> Not like that, Carl. It's all one. It's all we are. It's one love, man. We're on the same team. Yeah, man. we're just one voice, man. One true voice. 
Like those, like those lads. Yeah. They could play. Right, well, the, the Educating Ricky, <laughs> They right? could play. Well, that, why don't we play a record and come back with Educating Ricky? The Wind, Cat Stevens' we need, to, we need to get the, uh, jingle queued up as well. Yeah, I'll get the jingle queued up, No, yeah. I, I haven't got Neil Young lined up yet. No, not Neil Young, Cat Stevens, I'll I gave it to you. I know, I know, I know, we're not playing that yet. Can we just play well, a record? No, I told you to. Well, I told you to. See, what, what, is, what, what, so why aren't you playing the record I told you to play? Because we've just had something chilled, right, from Tupac. Let's lift it up a bit now with a little bit of a blur. Right? Come on, play it. Oh, I'm not sure. I just have. Crazy beat bro on XFM 104.9. Right, we're gonna, uh, do Educating Ricky instead of Rockbusters. Incidentally, like, on the subject of Rockbusters, we've just had an email from Phil. He says, I could do with this week's rather shoddy array of prizes, as I'm doing a car boot sale tomorrow, <laughs> and need a bit more tap to fill the table. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll send, well, probably send it we, to might, we might as well do it anyway. Yeah. But Educating Ricky, uh, it was a feature, well actually, um, about a year ago I started a feature called Educating Carl because we found out he had one E at O level at history, uh, and, uh, I'd educate him on things like Rasputin, um, things that I thought he'd be interested in, you know, Winston Churchill, some of the greats, some scientific facts, and, uh, then I said it's your turn and he started telling me about people born without legs, uh, some people have got a funny eye, there's a woman whose tongue's longer than her arm, and, uh, really, you know, turning the screw on education. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know what he's got for me today, maybe a dog born a cat. <laughs> Let's have a look. We've done that one, we've done that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there, is there, because some, often we should point out there's sometimes a crossover between Educating Ricky and Kiki Freak of the Week. Yeah. Just in terms of subject matter. Yeah, so, uh, uh, we've done Cheeky Freak of the Weeks, we've done all the freaks. What have we done with the Freak of the Week? There's a, uh, what was a dog? There was a woman that had the back legs of a dog. There was, last week, there was, what was last week? It was the, um, it was the, it was the girl who was born with four eyes, two mouths and three legs. Sure. You weren't that impressed, I thought, if we've got to that and it's not impressing you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's, let's we are a tough that. audience, let's, let's, let's move on. Uh, is there yeah. a jingle for, uh, Educating Ricky? Educating Ricky, oh, um, oh god. Oh, um, oh, you've told me, Educating Ricky. Oh. Very similar to some of the other jingles I've done. Yeah. Well, they're made by the same people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, okay, well, uh, it's just, I mean, Educating Ricky is just stuff that I learn in the week and I think that's interesting. I keep it up here and then I share it with you. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, some interesting stuff. Uh, one of them, right? Uh, uh Mount Everest. <laughs> Go on. I need, uh, I need more. <laughs> right, well, there's a problem. Yeah. Because people are, are leaving rubbish up there and that. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, people, whoever owns it is saying, oh, I'm gonna... Whoever owns it! <laughs> he's saying, forget this. They're leaving a mess. And all that. But do you know why it's called Mount Sorry, Everest? Sorry, what was that? That's one, is it? That's one. There's rubbish on Mount Everest. No, How I'm many not... people go up there? I know we talk about people dumping old tellies who's, and watching Who's, who's, who's fed it? up? The Yeti? What, I mean, what are you talking about? No, I, I mean, that, that isn't what I'm educating you. I'm just telling, this is part of the story. I'm just telling you. It's just a bit of context for you. Like, they, they're leaving loads of rubbish up there. Well, they're not leaving loads of rubbish out there, are they? No, they are. They're probably not like crams right. and washing machines and seagulls flying everywhere. I don't know. Anyway. Know. But anyway, do you know why it's called that? You know why it's called Mount Everest? Why well, it's called Mount Everest? I know the mount bit. It's because it's a large mount, and if you climb it, by the time you get to the top, you need to have a rest. And that is that isn't the educating bit. I'm just telling well, it's you. It's not true. Well, we'll, we'll leave that. Well, right. no. Carl, in the name of everything holy, do you think that anyone named it because you have to have a rest when you've climbed it? Well, we'll see. We'll see what people say on email. But well, that, it's definitely not. But anyway, that. that's one thing that, that I kind of thought, that's interesting. I'll remember that. I'll teach Ricky that so you've learnt that. <laughs> right, now, are you familiar with, uh, the, this thing that they can do if you're dead, right? <laughs> no, no, not if you're dead. It's like <laughs> if you're ill. And you know you're gonna die, yeah. right? I don't know what this is any anymore. Extraordinary. Have a rest. Extraordinary. Himalayas. Him Himalaya. <laughs> what? 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 what uh, Listen, on. this is an interesting fact. Come on. If so, if you're ill, but you know you're gonna die. Yeah, you can have this thing done in Detroit where you get put in a fridge. Right. 
and uh, if they work out, you know, what's wrong with you in 20 years' time, they go, right, that fella is in the fridge, he, he had that, we can sort it, let's get him out, and uh, they sort you out. That's... Yeah. Uh, is this the first time you've come across this idea? Yeah, I read it the other day, I didn't, I didn't know you've about it. You've never heard it. of this before? It's, so quite, it's quite, quite genetically preserved. Good, isn't it? They take, they, they take, they make, they put you at sort of like sub-zero temperatures so they stop all cellular activity. So does, do you, do you stop aging at that point? Yeah, you, mm -hmm. you, it's suspended animation. So, well what's the, what's the law on it, right? Because say if I, say if I add something, right? Yeah. And uh, I said, oh, put me in a fridge and, and when, when you've got the cure and that, wheel me out, sort me out. Say if they did that, yeah. and it was like 40 years, yeah. and in 40 years' time they, they, they get a cure for me. Yeah. Would, would I have to stay with Suzanne? <laughs> because she'd be 70. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean what are the rules? You can, should you be allowed to <laughs> date a younger woman? Well, it's, it's not fair, is it? Oh, no, like good no, news, good no. news, sort you out, but... I don't think she's mine, but I reckon she, she, she she'd have the best 40 years of her life. Yeah. <laughs> and plus, they're never gonna find a cure for what ails you. <laughs> that is genius! That is brilliant! You come out, you're cured, and you go, oh, no. I love the fact that's what you'd be lying there. <laughs> if, if you could think while he's in that state, you'd be thinking, oh, God. She's losing her looks. Yeah. She's, oh, dear. But, but everything else as well, like, my job wouldn't, wouldn't be here. No. No. Um... Although the figures would have gone up. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, flat's probably gone or knocked down or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Most of my family would be dead. Yep. So what's the point? What, 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 how do you know about it? Who's done it? Because, well, famously Walt Disney, apparently. I mean, Walt Disney actually did die, but had his body preserved. So that should they one day be able to bring back people <laughs> from, from the, the dead, dead, they need they need Walt yeah, Disney. They, they, hang on, who do we, we, who but, do we have? But with him, nothing is going to change because when he comes out, Mickey Mouse will still look the same. Sure, and plug and all that. Are, uh, <laughs> Black, play a record. Black. I, don't, I don't know where your mind is. Play a record. It's brilliant. You just say words. It's the amaretto. <laughs> <laughs> Cent in the club on XFM 104.9. So, uh, Carl's a little bit fed up today. Actually, whinging. I mean, properly whinging. Fed up. Reckons he's tired. Reckons he's overworked here. But, do you know what I mean, Carl? Everyone gets tired. Everyone gets tired. Everyone does the same sort of hours to you. What do you do? Sort of nine till six, seven? Uh, about nine till half seven, eight. Well, no, because I. A couple of times this week, I've thought I'd make you for a drink about six. So, it's funny, isn't it? That's yeah, weird. Some of the times I've come back after it, just for another forty minutes, and whilst no one's around, try and get stuff done without phones going, without emails coming in. Yeah, we got to do. Oh, can I tell you what I think is a disappointment? You're in the department. You got to do it. I just think it's a disappointment that Carl hasn't been able to put that aside and rise to the occasion. He's only got to do this show once a week. It's I two know. Hours. It's I mean, no one's we're, we're tired. We've we've we've, we've got. got a, a, you've got one job. We've got about six. And we're still doing it. Do you know what I mean? We still do it. We still. Well, you're a professional, Rick. I mean, that's why you've won multiple awards. It's because you're willing to get up there, even if you're feeling a little bit under the weather, even if you hurt yourself, you've got an injury of some kind. Yeah. Get up there, you're doing it. You're, yeah. you're entertaining. You're providing yeah. a service. Yeah. So it's a disappointment. Yeah, but I've pressed all the right buttons at the right time. Indeed. Right. That's what I get paid for. Yeah. 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 Done that. The adverts have gone out. Sure. Do you know what I mean? I've yeah. made you cups of tea. It's the negativity which is a problem. It's the vibe. You're bringing, bringing the room us down. down. Bringing us down. And the, and bringing therefore the listeners. Therefore the listeners. Bringing us down. If you don't like London, you know what to do. Well, oh, I'm trying. I'm trying to get out of here, aren't I? Try, we try just bought a new out. flat. That's not. That's, that's not doesn't the best matter, way. Buy a flat in Manchester, live there. <laughs> doesn't matter. I can always yes. rent it out and make a little bit of money. Why don't you sell the flat in London and buy um, a street in Manchester? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pilkington <laughs> Avenue. Really, you can literally have the Lord, yeah. the King of that street. <laughs> <laughs> people could, and people could come to you like Solomon with their problems. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's come up from London. He, he's got London ways. Now, so, interestingly, do, have you heard? You, do you remember the famous King Solomon story? That uh, there are two women. They're both arguing over. arguing over whose baby it is. 
and they present this to them, they say, this is, this is my baby, and the other one is, no, this is my baby. Blah, 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 so well, he knows one of them's lying, but he doesn't know which one. And so, uh, and so what does he do? How does he, how does King Solomon solve that? How does he figure out whose baby it is? How, what, for instance, what would you They're do? both white fellas, yeah? Both what? White, white fellas. Someone's women, two women. Right, it's a, two white well, women. To be probably, they probably weren't, you know, completely white. <laughs> Yeah, well, but, whatever. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're of the same <laughs> No, but I'm just working out, working out. Right, all right, then. So, that's yeah. all right. And don't think about what King Solomon would necessarily do. Yeah, it wasn't, that, it wasn't, it wasn't that easy. No, it's not, there's not one tall, skinny white one with big ears and so is the baby, the other one's a little short Chinese bloke. <laughs> yeah. It's two women, for a start. Yeah. Two women, okay. The baby, to look at, could be either. He doesn't know which, but he knows one of them's lying, obviously. And, and is the one lying saying it's hers or saying it's not hers? Right, okay, uh, uh, this isn't worth it, Steve. I'm gonna tell you what he said, and you tell me if you think it was good or not. He says, well, then what we do is, as King said, what we do is, I'll take a sword, I'll cut the baby into two, and you can have half each. And one of the women says, no, don't do that. And one of them says, yeah, that's fair. Right. Do you see? Ah, uh, so which one was it? Sorry? Who's- what? Well, no, my guess is the one that didn't want it done probably was the mother of the child. The one that didn't mind having the baby cut in half probably wasn't a mother of the child. Why don't you think, you bald little mank twat, play a record? Well, I'm just, uh, oh, right. Although, it's not a very good solution. No. I, that, that, that's not the name the, the woman who was lying could have come up with something better than, yeah, cut it in half. <laughs> what yeah. you should have done is, yeah, I'll give it to the other one as well. Yeah. From Aerosmith on XFM 104.9. Just trying to pet things See, up. See, Skyler, you're up. You're yeah. up there. I mean, we've got lots of work to do. We're filming too, and we've got loads of things, admin, DVDs, everything like that. We come in here. This is poxy. This is, this is, this is not a drop in the ocean, the sort of work and money we earn. <laughs> right, really? If we do this to keep charitable status. Because, and yet you, you know, Carl. Come on, what's the matter with you? Are we doing Rockbusters? I'll tell you what. what I tell, no, come on, Rick. I'll tell you what. Because it's your special day and I want yeah. you to have a great time today. Yeah. We're going to do Rockbusters. If just you cheer you. up. If you cheer up. Miserable. He just got ratty then. Go, no, don't push it on me, head. Don't put it on me, head. Right, just... what were you trying to put on me, head? I was trying to put a pear on your head to knock it off with a ball, like William Tao. But it was, th- your, because your head is so round and the pear was round, I tried to flatten it a little bit. And I didn't know it was a juicy pear. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought it'd be like a, just to crush it a little bit, and then he went mental because he had juice rubbing, running down his face. Oh. Why is it my fault the pears are faulty for pear? Exactly. Get a proper fruit in here. It worked with the apple. That was fine. And then he gets ratty with me. Okay, let's not waste any time with Rockbusters. Can we really, let's whip through it? Just, whip no through it. just do the clues, so. quickly. Quick, go, Rockbusters. Right, go. go. Right, the first clue. Yeah, yes. hurry up, faster. All the police cars are on fire. All the police cars are on fire. What's the uh, initials? BS. BS, all the police cars are on fire. Good. What's the next one? The director of 28 Days Later is shouting about sleeping outside. Yeah, right, okay, what's the, uh, the initials for that? DB. Right, okay. Okay, yeah. Right, go on then. He wants to be a sailor. Why is that? Yeah, well, um, what's the initials there? B. Brilliant, okay. Give them again quickly, because I didn't quite catch the second one, so, but go from the top. Mm. All the police cars are on fire. Yeah, that's B- BS. BS. Yeah. The director of 28 Days Later is shouting about sleeping outside. Yeah, okay. DB. Yeah. Right? He wants to be a sailor, why is that? Yeah. B. B, okay then, brilliant. Okay, now Carl, are you gonna cheer up now? Yeah. Email only, Ricky J- Gervais at virgin.co.net. <laughs> Radio yeah. One Roadshow Smiley Miley <laughs> Smiley Miley's mileage game. If anyone remembers <laughs> that, I mean, here's a man, right? Who, who, whose job? Smiley Miley was not a DJ. Let me forget. <laughs> Smiley Miley was the guy that organised the vans <laughs> that carried the equipment to and from the roadshows. <laughs> because he was such a crazy personality. Because he smiled a little bit. <laughs> exactly. He got recognition, Carl. Longevity, lots of money, and lives where he wants to live. The town that he wants to live in. Why don't you just enjoy the town that you've chosen to live in, because it's so good? London. Where, what towns have you been to? Have you, have you travelled at all? I've been about a bit, yeah. Right, okay, then. What towns did you like? Okay, forget Manchester. We've, that's safe. You like Manchester. Well, I'll do the big three. Shouting. London, New York, Paris. Okay, you don't like London, even though you live here. Got flats here. Good. Excellent. That makes sense. Have you been to New York? Yeah. What do you think? It's, my, it's an amazing city, isn't it? I like it. it it's, it's, 
It's just noisy, it's yeah. smelly. Well, it's the city that never sleeps. Um, I'm not surprised with all the, all the racket and that. <laughs> <laughs> Paris. The city uh, of love. The most romantic city in the world. Not really. I remember seeing an old woman in McDonald's in there and it put, it put me off. That's where, where that thing happened, where the what? old woman was. What did you say? Tell us. We talked about it before, the old woman in McDonald's. Yeah, what she happened? Was, she was sat in the corner there with her legs open, no knickers on, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Did that's that put, Paris. Did that put you off your cheeseburger? Next city, where, where next? Have you been to, uh, I don't know, uh, oh, the most beautiful city, Venice. Yeah, I've been there, yeah. It's good? No. Why? Because, <laughs> because they, they sell it, they sell it to you as if it is a romantic city. Where did you see it? Sold? No, I saw, I saw it on, uh, when I was growing up, right? Remember 321 with Ted Rogers? <laughs> yeah, of course. He used to be one been... of the star prizes on there. Right. And they'd say, let's show you the video, let's see what you're going to, let's see where you're going to be loving yeah. it for a couple of weeks. And he'd show you this scene yeah. of, like, the gondolas. Yeah. And all the, all, all the city lit up at night. Yeah. Like yeah. a man and woman sat on a boat, loving yeah. it and stuff. Yeah. I went there, bin bags everywhere. <laughs> Play a record. Oh, it's an ass. Play a record. It's London. That is people. Wish You Were Here with Carl Pilkington. All right. <laughs> it's London flooded. <laughs> Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Stop. On XFM. Carl's back. He's cheering up a little bit. Because, uh, he's, he, I think he's vented his spleen a little bit on, um, cities around the world that aren't as good as Manchester. So, uh, is there any of your family left in Manchester? Because they all moved away, didn't they? You came here, your dad's moved to Wales, for Christ's sake. Well, your family are all around the... Brother joined the army to get anywhere. Just take me anywhere. I don't know where he is. His sister's moved away, so no Ireland. one... Ireland, yeah. Yeah, there you go, know. you see? So, that's just one family. <laughs> That's just, that's, that's one family who love Manchester. <laughs> exactly. All right? <laughs> Tell you what, Steve. Go on. I did find out in the week. Yeah. Uh, world record, mm. right? Uh, person with the longest trump. With the longest what? Wind. Fart. Right. Right? <laughs> Two minutes forty-two is the world record. Okay. Right? Well, I'm immediately thinking about a relative of yours, who I'm sure did longer than that. Who still lives in Manchester. Auntie Nora. Now, Auntie Nora did it for five minutes, wasn't it? Reportedly, staff fight for five minutes. But, unfortunately, she was the only person in the room. Where, whereas, I think, which one's alive, Ross or Norris McWhorter? Uh, I don't know, actually. He has to be there. Yeah, I think he actually, actually has to he'd be He'd have to be there. Would you want to be there? <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd have sort of equipment, and looking at his watch, going, finish, he goes, yeah, he goes, well, that was... Four minutes. Did she go from seconds. like a size ten to a size six? <laughs> she just, Did she like, show some old dresses? Like a, like a hovercraft. Exactly. In a, a big dress. Yeah. Just yeah. slightly off. Yeah. So, uh, uh, it has to be invigilated. But again, you know, how was the world, Guinness Book of World Records one invigilated? I mean, who, who was supervising that? Who he said, he said, that? I can fart for two minutes. They went, well, we've got to see this. Went round. And, uh, he just probably let it rip. It's probably circular breathing. He's probably sort of sucking in air and swallowing it as he's going. And it's a continuous one, isn't it? It's not like... Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's had, you know, that's, that's how Nora's happened, me auntie Nora. <laughs> she had a little bit of wind, it went on for like two and a half minutes. Sure. That's, that's when she called me mum. <laughs> as it was still going on. And said, uh, there's something not right here. I'm and, leaking. Uh, she, she said, oh, can you send, uh, your dad round? You know, my dad. Yeah. Sent to me mum. With a cork. And, uh... <laughs> With a lighter. Yeah. <laughs> this would be the best one I ever. I want to show the kids something. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'll be there in a bit, get the windows open. <laughs> <laughs> but what well, it was down to, because I was talking to my mum about it. Is she the one with the split it. tennis ball? Yeah. So we're not talking about that I was, I was talking to my mum and dad about it, saying, you know, why, why do you think it happened and that. And it's because she, she never chucks food away, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she'll sort of mash it all up. Mm -hmm. And she's got all these ice cream tubs in the fridge. That are just full Cabbage of like water. old mashed up food. Really? And she prepares everything. Right? She doesn't work. She's retired now. She's got <laughs> nothing to do all day. But everything's got to be ready. Still for calls it. in well, sick. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Everything's got to be done. Even though it, if you're going round to her house and you're going there for tea, it's like, what time are you coming? And it's like, well, I don't know, maybe five, maybe six. Yeah, yeah you're well, late. Because you're late when you have to meet us at five or six. Do you know what I mean? That's what. Well, so, so when you say she mashes up food, she literally takes the remnants of a dinner. Could be sort of some anything. 
and just smashes it all up into a... Yeah. And then what does she do with it? Put it we, in the fridge and she's got it in the fridge. It's like January, February, March. She's got all these ice cream boxes that are just full of... But she doesn't... She reheats it and eats it. Oh, then, she? then she, yeah, put I it in the pan. I thought she was just keeping it as a no, souvenir no, 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 no. of each meal she'd have. No, put it in the pan, warm it up. Oh, that's And that's, that's what it is. It's just... A lot of vegetation, is it? Yeah. Why does it only happen once or does she save it up once a year just let it go? I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, she is mad. She's... Yeah, she sounds potty. She, she doesn't answer the phone anymore in case she's a burglar. Checking if she's in. <laughs> it's like, we'll answer it and then they'll know you are in and they won't come out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mental. Well, they, Mental. Ha they can't be sure then, can they? What do you mean? Well, if there's no, if I go, well, maybe it's someone just, they are in but they're hiding, whereas if Auntie Nora goes, it's Auntie Nora. We can nick, she'll be farting. <laughs> we can sneak in when she does a loud one. <laughs> and, and she'll be, we'll be aware of the telly, what's, what's stopping it? It's got a balance round it. It's got, it's got caught on the cat. <laughs> So, have we got a recap on Rockbusters? No, do just do, has anyone got the right answers? Uh, I've... Has so anyone far, got the right answers? Let me just check here. Uh, here's one from, uh, from someone who just says, uh, he's given an answer, uh, answer to number one, I, number two, don't, number three, care. Right, okay, is he close? Has anyone got three answers? I can't find one with three answers. So, again, you've done something wrong, Carl. No, da, 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 no. This isn't radio, this isn't radio, play a record. There you go, someone's got it. Give, give it to them. One. Fine, okay, give us the clues again, we'll give the answers straight yeah. away. No fanning around. Yeah, right. it's pointless. Number one, yeah. all, the, all the police cars are on fire. BS. BS. Yeah, what was that? I can think of something. Go on. Blazing Squad. Brilliant. Okay. Right. Uh, the director of 28 Days Later is shouting about sleeping outside. Yeah. That's Dan Yell Bedding Field. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, Daniel, we're never in field. Right, we're never letting him do this again. I told you I washed my hands of it. I know, but Why I just thought. Why did you let him? Why do you? Because I... he was grumpy. But this is what happens. Look what's happened. Daniel Bedinfield. That's what's that's the, that's that's what happened. The director of so so Danny Boy. So Dan, right? It, all that for Dan. That shouting about being Dan Yell Bedinfield. Right. What's the last one? He wants to be a sailor, why is that? Yeah. Beyonce. What does that mean? Beyonce. He wants Beyonce. to be on the sea. Play record. You're I, never doing it again. You've I just can't... signed your death warrant. What have we done? You're never doing Rockbusters again. And if Monkey News about that, we've banned that as well. Mm. We've unleashed And we're serious it. this time. So join Catford. <laughs> stuff off to you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's even doing the shout out. Here you won. Well done, Matt. What have we done, Rick? What have we done? Beyonce. Knowles. Is his surname? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Midshipman Knowles. Now, Carl, we're going to do another edition, I think, of Wish You Were Here, because that really cheered you up, didn't it? So, um, where else you been? Where else you been? Have you been, um, been around Europe, haven't you? You've been to any hot country? You've been to Greece? Greece. Uh, uh Turkey? From Turkey, yeah. Yeah. To Turkey. Uh, little fellas. Little midgets working in the canteen in the hotel I was in. <laughs> okay. Asked <laughs> Suzanne as well. <laughs> okay. Have you, uh, have you been to, uh, have you been to Scotland? Uh, once. For the, uh, for the Edinburgh Festival. Go on. Um, that's where I looked out in my hotel room, <laughs> saw a traffic warden putting a, a ticket on some bin bags. Brilliant. Because they've gone into the road. So that's, so that's, that's Turkey, Scotland. Uh, what about places, uh, here? Has he been to, have you been to the West Country? Where we, where have you been to my neck of the woods, Bristol? Uh, I haven't been to, what else is around there? Bath? Been to Bath, yeah. yeah. what do you make of it? Uh, once you've been, well, they don't need to go again. Cause it's sort of old and they don't, they don't change anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know I mean? That'll so be the Roman spa yeah, he's yeah. talking about, like, I think. Yeah. What about, um, uh, Brighton? Uh, oh, gay people. Right, okay, thank you. Uh, next week on Wish You Were Here, uh, we'll go to some other places where there are gay people. Fascinating. And Brilliant. And another extraordinary insight there. Uh, Carl, could we have some monkey news? Well, just before we do monkey news, right, can I do a little, uh, psychological test on you? On me? Yeah. Okay. Brilliant, though. Someone emailed it in. Brilliant. Right. Little story with mm -hmm. a question at the end. Okay. Right? 
Right. This is gonna be <laughs> so annoying. No, 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 it's not, honestly. It's well, it is, cause you're gonna think it's science and it's gonna be trite. Alright, well. Go on. Right. Little, little story first, right? There's this funeral. Right? And this girl was at a funeral. Same funeral? Yeah. Right. It, it was a mother's funeral. Oh, yeah. Right? She met this fella who she didn't know. Right? But she thought this fella who she met was amazing. She didn't know him, right? But she thought he was brilliant, right? Like a dream fella. Right. And she fell in love with him, right? But never asked for his, his number, his phone number. Right. right. And she couldn't find him. Now, a few days later, the girl killed her own sister. Right? Yes. The question is, why did she do that? Okay, well it's one of those stupid things then, isn't it? Oh. So it's not logic, it's, it's, it's what am I thinking? No, no, it's not. So it's, it's a proper, so it's, it's a so proper it's mental logic. test. It's a it's proper a, mental test. A mental test? It does, it is a bit mental. So, so you understand the story, uh, yeah? I kind of, let me just get it right. So there's a funeral, a girl goes to the funeral of her mother, um, she, she meets the guy, or she, she, she meets, meets she the guy at the funeral. She, she meets, meets the guy. Or, he looks all right. I fancy a bit of that. Right. right. Has a chat with him. Yeah. But doesn't get his name. Doesn't get a phone number. Or anything. So, 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 cut a long story short. The things are at ask, right? So, so the reason she kills her own sister is this something to do with finding out something about the man she met? Well, I, just answer the thing. Just why do you, why? Do you oh, okay then. Um, I'll answer it then. Um, she went mental. She he was a spy called Derek. What do you mean? Just answer it. Anyway, I'm testing Steve. Right, well, she killed her own sister because, uh, her sister, um, had stolen some money from her. And was sleeping with her husband. Is that, is that it? Well, well I, I don't know, Carl. It's an answer. Is that an answer? Is that an answer? I don't what's, know. What's, what's the answer on the paper? <laughs> <sighs> so, well, come on, what come is- Come on! Well, the, the answer is- No, an answer is- <laughs> That she was hoping that the guy would appear at the funeral again. He'd, he'd go to the <laughs> funeral. Right, that's not a proper psychological test. It is, it's, it's one of those it. stupid little shitty things. It's, it's like it. a man goes into a field and dies. Why? His parachute didn't open. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised you'll learn anything. Oh, uh, I love I'm that. Romeo and anything. Juliet. Oh, Juliet's a fish. He said, she was hoping that the guy would appear again at the funeral. If you answered this correctly, you think like a psychopath. This was a test by a famous fella, right? Who used it on killers, and most of the killers got the answer right. Did you also well, think that? Was that the answer you gave when you no, first read it? No, I didn't know, I didn't know. But I, I wondered what you would have got. Good, yeah, so that's proof I'm not a psychopath. Yeah, but that, that's the point, but it's a, it's a, it's a psychological <laughs> test for looking at something very, very specific. What's up with that? Well, what, what was the best that could happen? That he'd got it right so he is a psychopath? What annoys me is you're not happy with that, 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 that test, but before you wasted three minutes trying to balance a pair on my head. <laughs> What, what were you getting out of that? Let's play a song and let the monkey do that. Joe Jackson, is she really going out with him on XFM? Right, it's the time that most people I imagine have been waiting for. Monkey news. Play the jingle. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right. Um, Come on. Come on. <laughs> Should be ready, Carl. Uh, it's amazing, isn't it? It's the, uh, uh, Nicholas Witchell. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, ooh, the bomb. No, what, no, that's not the first. Um, Come on! No, it's always difficult, isn't it, to, to sort of find something that's good each week, right? Last week, we did the chimps. It is for us, yeah. Did, it, we had the chimps who were running a health spa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, we've covered the one who, who nicked a car to go on to Spain. Yep. To wow. his future out. All, all shite. Uh, the hairdresser, I think he's, you know, we've done that one, the little monkey hairdresser. This week we're looking at monkeys, um, that they're using, do you know like monkeys, they, they, know, they know, they know how like- I've lost the will to live, Steve. Oh, well, I don't want to do it. <laughs> but, well, come on, just, come on. What are monkeys good at? What are monkeys good at? Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> well, running small businesses. <laughs> Uh, hair, they're very good at yeah, yeah, they love Spain. Oh, and foiling bank robberies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're great. Well, something else they're good at, right, is like weighing up the situation. <laughs> 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 oh, God! If you stick them in a, in like a, 
a field with loads of, like, obstacles on it, right? They're good at sort of, yeah, I can get over that, and I'll climb over that, I'll swing from there to there, that sort of thing, right? Okay. So the people in charge of somewhere, I thought, oh, somewhere. Come on. I thought we can use that, we can use that skill, right? What? And what, what, the, what they've done is they've got a lo load of, uh, little monkeys, right? They've given an IQ test. Yeah. And the ones that score above 80, right? Get to produce this show next week. <laughs> <laughs> Join the army. <laughs> right. How do they join the army and what do they do? They just, um, what they do is they, they set little obstacle courses up for them. They do that. They do a cross country run. They do, um, the a cross country test. run? Yeah. Okay. And then once they've done all that, they make them a little uniform, made to measure little uniform. Long, yeah. slightly longer arms, shorter legs than usual, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Basically, then they try out to use a gun and that sort of thing. Yeah, of course they are. <laughs> uh, You're talking rubbish again. <laughs> this, this came this came through literally, you know, pretty late late on. So, so you've not had a chance to cooperate all the facts as usual. Just have a look. <laughs> right, uh, it's the inter the bit I'm looking for is well, a why they're doing it, why are they doing it? Yeah. Why do we need monkeys in the army? And secondly, why are we giving them guns? I'll yeah. just check to see if any of that. I love that we only let guys in recently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. Um, a lot. I can't read it. I, I, there's too much pressure on it. But it's rubbish. Just have a, just have a, but it's uh, rubbish. They don't get it. Again, it's the way that there are things that, that, that you, there are, there are animal cores, right? There are horses, there are dolphins, sea lions, uh, you know, there are lots and lots of animals in the army, but they don't have to pass <laughs> an obstacle test as such, and they're not taught to fire guns. Well, You've straight away assumed that they're going to be, there's going to be uh, loads of squads of men, and then just one little monkey in the middle. <laughs> like, you know, he did, he's came second on the test. He's in. <laughs> he's in, boys. What do you think, Steve? Do you think you've read it? Well, as ever, Carl, this is an arbitrary email sent by one of our listeners. You know what Ricky and I think of them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so we're not really basing this on hard evidence. We're basing it on the ramblings of one of our listeners. Rubbish. Once again, lazy, rubbish, uncorroborated, nonsense, the stupid test that you got wrong. Rick, that <laughs> sounds like monkey news to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have a great show, everyone. Oh, yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good luck um, right, that was Jane's Addiction, just because, on XFM 104.9. Right, everybody up, let's give them a great show, yeah? Two hours of, like, fun chat. Let's keep it, you know, let's keep it cutting edge. Let's not be too, uh, I mean, that's what the listeners of XFM would, oh, no, it isn't, is it? No, because, hold on, wait a minute, because we came in yesterday and did this little skit, didn't we, where we bleeped it out. A little sketch. It was quite noisy, quite then controversial. And Carl called me last night, and we're not allowed to play it out. Oh, but we've been censored. Yeah. Uh, interesting, that's, interesting. Yeah. So it's a cutting edge alternative station. Wants to push the boundaries. Wants to be thought of as yeah. rock and roll, a bit punk, a bit punk rock. Yeah, because I, 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 I um, uh, I said something about the radio authority. I bleeped it out sure. what I called them. Yeah, but uh, couldn't do it. Done no, it right, before. Censored. Couldn't do it. Censored. Carl mm -hmm. agrees though. What's your thoughts, Carl? You agree with that? Yeah, or? I agree. Yeah. Why? Well, Why? What's the point? Well, it was funny, wasn't it? And it wasn't offensive. Not, not really. It's not some of the best stuff that would have ever gone out on this show, but. You know. Right, what are you putting up against, exactly? <laughs> Kicky Freak of the Week? Well, that, that springs to mind. Yeah. And Rockbusters? <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. the thing is, you know, the things that you have put out there, I mean, we, we better be really careful. Who's worried about complaints? I mean, it's not just swearing, is it? It's taste and decency oh, and everything. Yeah. So, we can't, we can't laugh about the disabled anymore no. in the Cheeky Freak of the Week. Mm. Uh, can't do stories about elderly relatives with genitals looking like a split tennis ball. Oh. Um, can't do your bad dad putting a child with learning difficulties in a bin, so what should we just play music? I think that's all it's gonna have to be, yeah. Uh, Accidents Will Happen by Elvis Costello on XFM 104.9. Carl's a little bit stressed because it's not his fault, it was the boss that overruled him. He came along. What did he do? He heard you, he heard you listening to it. Yeah. What did he say? He said, what's that? I said, it's what Ricky wants to play out tomorrow. Yeah. And he said, well, can't go out like that. Too many but they're all bleeped. We bleeped. We bleeped the swear words. Yeah, but I didn't want it to go out. I mean, you got to remember, right? We came. You came in yesterday to have a chat about what we're going to do. Yeah. One of the topics that I said, let's talk about, which yeah. I came up with, yeah, was 
Let's talk about swearing. No, you said you never had a problem with swearing. It was in Norway. Yeah, that's right. And then we did the thing about, isn't it funny that you can, the you know, you know, the thing about you can bleep uh, a swear word by taking out the vowel. So we're going, so it's the vowel that's offensive. And we did a little sketch around that and then ended, you know, uh, and uh, he wanted to completely obliterate the word in the end, didn't want to put the thing in that we said about the radio authority, which I don't, I don't think, I think it was valid and wouldn't have got a complaint. Yeah, you but know, at the end of the day, he's the boss and what, what he says goes, doesn't it? Sure. So, <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> <laughs> Right. But, 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 but what you got to remember is what he also said is if you want to pay the seventy grand fine, then go well, ahead and do it. Be, there wouldn't be a seventy grand fine, there would there? Would, well, you don't know what it'd be. But will you pay it? Will you pay for my mortgage? Will you pay for his mortgage? Will well, you feed his kids? He wouldn't be fired. What do you mean? Well, if I tell you what, if it's not a fine, we'd lose the license, then we'd all be fired. Right? Do you home. seriously think you'd lose the license for that sketch? Well, Does he really seriously think well, you'd lose know, the license? But it's it is not the worst thing we've ever put out or done or ever will do. Yeah, but it's the fact that he said don't put it out and you're like, you know, throwing your toys out the pram. <laughs> oh, I want, I want to say just, it, I want to say it, how old are you? But you still want to put swearing out. It's, like, it's a discussion about the radio authority and the way people are interested. Yeah, but leave it, let's don't move get on. annoyed. Yeah, but I'm annoyed because you've been at it since about half past twelve. <laughs> I know, well, I, I like to get in early to plan the show. Yeah, but there's been no planning. So, to be honest, I'd turn off today, anyone listening, because there's nothing. Carl, there's never anything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sometimes some good things, but today, seriously, what is, what is I'd, I'd, I'd leave it. Was something half decent that's been on this show. Those are little interesting topics. Go on, like I can't remember any. Right, gays in toilets. Yeah. Mm, not particularly interesting. Fascinating to you, perhaps. Right, well, I'd prefer to hear that than just a load of swear words. Well, we, we're not gonna hear any, we wouldn't have heard any swear words. We'd have heard some bleeping. Right then, so that's, that's entertaining, isn't it? load of bleeps. <laughs> it's because you don't want to stand up to your boss or say anything. Don't get annoyed stand, with that. I'd stand up to all, uh, if, if I agree with what I'm arguing about, but I'm not falling out with him over some crappy thing you want to play out. Don't, don't say crappy. Don't well, don't it doesn't say matter, because I'm That's not really here really next week, I'll tell you that. I've can this in. Don't right? say so crappy. So Andrew is listening. Don't Someone say be crappy. Next week. Play a record. We apologise for the word crap. That's out of order. Big Sir, the thrills on XFM 104.9. Starting off another nice atmosphere again in the studio. Don't blame me, it's not my fault. No, I know, I know. Well, it's your fault mainly. <laughs> yeah. You are bad, you are quite bad. Well, don't, come on, don't. Uh, come on, you are. Don't yeah. try and win him round just because he's scared you. <laughs> I don't know who's that against. <laughs> it's it's you, I don't yeah. know, no. It's you. <laughs> right, uh, well, I'm not a coward. No. I'm not a coward. Okay, I'm, but... just, I'm just thinking of the listeners, Rick, and I just want them to be entertained. Yeah. Luckily, that's not a big problem for us. <laughs> what? <laughs> what, you mean we're effortlessly entertaining or there's no listeners? Well, yeah, somewhere, somewhere in between. Yeah. Sure. Carl, what's happened to you this week, mate? Now it's happened. <laughs> 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 come on, well, just, happened. come on, I came in, I came in and he had an hour lunch break, you know, he's sort of like he never gets a break, I came in one day, he was out for an hour, I had a nice little chat with Andrew Phillips about, you know, where we were going with the show and, you know. Where are we going with it? <laughs> you can't with anything? <laughs> ah, dear. <laughs> it's oh. how far we can run it into the grave. Yeah, no, if we go off air, it certainly won't be through, uh, being cutting edge or controversial <laughs> because people are just turned off because it's too boring to listen to. Brack. Um, but uh, he was out for an hour. Having a lunch break for an hour. Oh, yeah. He's too busy. I oh, know, yeah. It is interesting. Uh, so, uh, I got actually on the subject of that, I noticed Dan here has emailed in. He says, I was listening to last week's show and I think Carl is taking his job for granted. Uh, I'd love to swap with him for a week. My qualifications are that I can press play on a CD player <laughs> and stop. Carl, what do you think of that? And he can come in next week, seriously. Yeah. It says here he Don't get ratty, Carl. I'm not, not being ratty. Dan, email me. You know my address, email, it'll be sorted out, you can be here next week. <laughs> Dan, Dan suggested we could call it Carl Idol, where people audition each week, or perhaps yeah. Bone Idol. <laughs> I like that. Bone Idol. Brilliant. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have we got a monkey news, Carl? Uh, don't know, I can be bothered. <laughs> Play a record. Play a record. <laughs> Pretenders? <laughs> Kid. Oh dear. On High XFM. Well, I know 4.9. That's professionalism, isn't it? Yeah, that is unbelievable. <laughs> Ricky, you were, I mean, I don't know if I can describe it really, the yeah. scene. You were going mental, you were yeah. shouting, you were really being quite an unpleasant character. But well, it's wait, the mic's come on, Rick, and yeah. you're an absolute Funny, you're a charmer. Funny, well, well, funny how people get annoyed. Carl, Carl said levels. that uh, we don't have to be here next week if Andrew gets annoyed. I was going, I went, this is entertainment. He plays this to entertainment. We haven't done anything against the law yet, have we? Or uh, offensive or against the radio. Carl said crap, but I think we'll get away with that. 
Yeah. So what is there to worry about? Exactly. Right, let's just draw a line under the beach. Yeah, let's start again. Yeah, come on. Can we just on. hug and make up? Can we just have a yeah. kiss? Yeah. yeah, come on. No, don't that. Just, Carl, what have we got? <laughs> What's on the list? We've done swearing, we've done swearing. That's that sorted out. <laughs> Well, no, your point was more that you- weren't you interested in- in why swearing people find it offensive? Yeah, a little bit Cause that, that seems obvious to me. Cause you- cause you were saying yesterday that you don't, never understood why people find it offensive, weren't that's you? That's right, that's right. Yeah. But you- I know. Well, yeah. go on. Yeah, but that's what I was saying to you, why you can't do it on the radio, cause people find it offensive for some reason. I don't yeah. agree with it, but some people do. Yeah. I'm saying everyone swears. Bleep it out, I would. But I- see, this Bleep is it out. Bleep it out, that's my- that's my theory. But you say that everyone swears, not everyone does swear. I don't know why you've got this in your head that everyone swears. I'm convinced. Everyone. What? Well, everyone. Like, you know, religious people, the religious leaders. Jesus. The I bet Jesus swore. <laughs> <laughs> right. What's your evidence for that? No, I'm just thinking, I mean, things are better now than they were back then. Right? Right. He's wandering about in his sandals getting pebbles stuck in there and stuff, <laughs> and that's annoying. <laughs> Nails in his hand, that must have hurt. <laughs> what right. I'm that's offensive. No, that, it's not that. That's blasphemous. No, but what I'm Don't saying, laugh at- don't laugh at the crucifixion. Play a record. I'm not- I'm not laughing at that though. That is terrible. I'm can just you saying. saying. No, you can email in, um, if you want to complain. Carl. Yeah? Dot Pilgrim at xfm.co.uk. Well, it's not offensive though, I'm just saying it's a fact. When you stub your little toe, you let out, let out a little effing and jeffing. what do you think he- is he- effing and jeffing? So the kind of ancient Hebrew version of effing and jeffing. Ooh, oh, I'm yeah. worried about this. I'm worried about this. This is naughty. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's, oh, when it's... did you start swearing? I, I started swearing at school. Right. I hope you haven't offended any Christians. Right, there's a lad at, at my school, right, who, uh, got caught swearing. I mean, I got caught and I got- When I got... you say got caught, well, how, how were you, what was it, you were like, like, like riding the bike and <laughs> having a swear? <laughs> <laughs> ah, you got an EMS? <laughs> yeah. No, I've only got one C left, it's my dad's. <laughs> oh, come on, let's have a go on it. Let's have, let's say unt. Yeah. Let me say the unt. Get no. Get older kids to buy you some swearing. No, no, just, just smoke it down to the car. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you're right there, you're behind the watch, she's having a swear. Yeah. And a teacher hears, hears him say, right, the S word. The S word. The S word. Why are we? Yeah. So, uh, the way, the way, the way this teacher dealt with it, he, uh, he said, right, it's not a clever word to use. And he tried to make him get sick of using it <laughs> by, he had to write an essay using that word 300 times. Right? Yeah. So, I would have loved that. But I that's just practice that. for a kid. But that is like, that is like the, the, the father catching the kid with a cigar. And making him smoke, making it smoke it Yeah, time. yeah. Doesn't work with heroin if you've got a <laughs> young teenager who's jacked up for the first time. <laughs> yeah. It can be dangerous. The funny thing is though, right, his mum found his textbook. <laughs> of course. Thought he was depressed and wanted to take him counselling. Because <laughs> everything was S. He was writing down, this is... And did and it was... work? Did he, did he, did it wean him out? Yeah, did he? Yeah. The teacher, I mean, he, he disappeared. He, he got kicked out for, um, hitting a kid on the head with a bit of wood. So... It wasn't you, was it? <laughs> Long view, further. That's great, that. That's the good tune. Can I just give a big shout out, Rick? Go on. To, uh, John Kay. He's listening online in Los Angeles, City of Angels. Brilliant. It's his first time listening to the show. Um, who knows what he's making of it. I wonder if we should explain he's what up, Carl is to him. He's up early. Well, he's got up apparently to record it and then he's gone, gone back to bed. Oh, right. So, so he's listening to it any time. So, uh, oh, yeah. Exactly. Carl, uh, well, Can you Carl, explain what he is? Um, well, he's, he's a little bit of a grumpy, spoiled, lazy prat at the moment. No, I think that's But what usually happens. he's quite a funny, nice, sort of genuine guy who's in awe of the world if it's furry mm. and doesn't really <laughs> care if it isn't. <laughs> but, uh,. Anyway, we're all one big happy family, you're Come right? on, Carl. Attitude up. You're happy. Right? Happy. If we're happy, the listener is happy. We were talking about, uh, <laughs> schools, <laughs> swearing, kids at school. Mm. I- I just remember at school- I got loads of my friends now are becoming teachers. Yeah. And I just- I can't imagine what it must be like in an environment with kids. Cause when we were at school, I mean not particularly me, but lots of people in the- in the class, and you'd all end up doing it, would just treat teachers like they were- they weren't humans, like they yeah. were just creatures from another well, planet, that were then to be tormented. Because, yeah, it's, it's- it's a game, isn't it, to see how far you can wind someone up to distraction. But is it- And but most is it, people grow out of that. But is it because- <laughs> not everyone. But especially they've got a bit of cash in their pocket now, <laughs> and uh, a little bit of success. They tend to think that that gives them license to treat people badly, it's terrible. But, <laughs> Uh, but I remember there was a guy, this is such a terrible story, there was a, there was a teacher who came in 
and he was teaching us, and, and one kid, one of the hard nuts, he'd found out that this, this guy's, he lived on his own and he had a cat, and the cat got run over. Mm. And, and so he, we got in early, like everyone was in early, and before the teacher came in, and this kid drew a picture of a cat being run over by a car, in chalk, on the blackboard, a huge picture of it. And the teacher just came in, saw it, burst into tears and ran out. And the thing is, that was like the beginning of term, so he could never get us back after that. There was never going to be any respect for him. It was just- Because you're quite, I know, yeah. It's just like, I just remember now thinking about it, just thinking- I mean, at the time I remember thinking it was bad, but now it's just heartbreaking. It's devastating. I know. It's just so- They just forget. They let their guard down a little yeah. bit. Did you ever do the one where you just- just, mm, mm, just humming. Yeah. And, and, yeah, everyone, and you tell us to stop it and then everyone just gonna- We used to, there was one teacher, uh, me and my mate used to go up to and, and just, when we was talking to the other one, just sort of sniff him <laughs> slightly and then sort of like, so he goes, what, I've got nothing. And he just, he'd, <laughs> he'd walk away sniffing his armpit. But those kind of mind games, it's like- I know. Incredible. Once, right, I was talking about this in the week actually, we had this, uh, um, uh, teacher and he must have been sort of like, sort of 60 then, right, and we're all about sort of like 12. We had to do French, you had to put your thing on the booth and it was a, uh, I, t I told you something. Le chat est sur le, you know, all that, right, and rep that repite, mean? um, cats on the wall, right. Mm. Um, and, uh, it, you'd repeat it in French and of course everyone was going F, <laughs> C, so yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. like, just for fun. And he heard this and he listened back to all of them and he realised it goes, and he went mental. He went, uh, uh, I don't believe this! Do you know how much these cost? He was going mad and he was going red and bursting like Carl was earlier. And it was like, I just I can't stand this anymore! And he, he picked up an exercise book and said, look at this exercise book! Look! And, uh, um, I won't say the kid's name, he went so and so, look, oh look, oh look, he's put, and, uh, his, I'll change his name, um, Smithers. He went, oh look, he's put Smithers in his shit! Oh, oh! He goes, oh, he's got clever on this side! He's put Smithers in the lamp of shit! That's good! <laughs> right? And oh. he went berserk, he went, he went, oh look, he's drawn a picture of a penis with wings, and he's written underneath, Diggy Bird! He went, is that clever? He went, do you want me to put a piece of paper up so you can come and write swear words and draw ladies' genitals all day? And I went, <laughs> <laughs> like that laugh, he went, I'm glad you think it's funny! Mr. Gervais! And he stormed out. Oh, God. Yeah. And, and did he ever come back? No, but we put the bit of paper up for him and said, <laughs> nice. look, well, look what yeah. you've done, you sir. <laughs> That's a fanny. Yeah. There's some knobs. Yeah. Was it biology? Uh, no, it was French. Oh, French, of course. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. I just remember things like games like, um, there was some cupboards at the back of the, one of the, the, I think the maths class, and one kid just got in the, in the cupboard before the teacher came, and then sat in there for like, you know, 45 minutes, and just towards the end of the, the thing just came out. Brilliant. Just came out and just went, oh, and sat down. And just, just things like that, which just kind of, it's not, I don't know what it is, or I don't know what, it's just I've an utter a, lack of respect. I played it? a trick like that once in my first year at college, this is pathetic, right, we're on a hall of residence, right, and there was this woman, um, sort of, sort of uh, middle-aged woman come around in a twin set, and I, I think she was from a bank where she was doing students, can you do a bank count? And um, we knew she was coming up the corridor and she was not right, and so my mate got in my wardrobe in this little room, right? Just sat there, she came in and I said, I said, have you banged? I said, uh, yeah, I banged. I said, okay, can I just do it? And there was a knock on the wardrobe, I went, I went, come in. And he just came out and I, I went, I went, all right, and he left, right? And she just looked at me and I started laughing, I went, sorry, she went, you're not interested, I went, no. <laughs> But he just fell flat. He just fell flat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Carl, a little bit happier now? Yeah. Mm. I'm happy. Mm. What, you know, what have you done this week? Doesn't bother me. Mm. Doesn't no, what have you done this week? Mm. Doesn't bother me. That. No, Carl, answer the question to the producer. What have you done this week? A few mm. things. Oh, it's funny, right? Because when he's moaning about, uh, I was telling about, I'd caught him out. It, he says he doesn't get a lunch break. He had over an hour. Um, and uh, and then he went. I think he went quite early that night to get a, a hob that hadn't been delivered or something so. And uh, I said to, uh, was it James Hyman was it, wasn't he? Yeah, that's right. And I said, um, James, he's always complaining about working, does he work hard? And he went, well, he doesn't work as hard as he used to. Mm, Play a record, can't we? Interesting. Don't want to really Play at the start, mm, but now I might do it in a bit, a bit lazy. I'm not saying you're lazy. I'm saying, that, you know, Ooh. maybe some people don't think you work as hard as you do, that's the, that's the way of the world. I'm not saying you don't work hard. Just reporting speech, really, on James Hyman, calling him a liar. Play a record. Can't be bothered. Play a record, Carl. Mm. Mm. Well, I reckon we could do this all the way through, Billy Bragg. Mm. <laughs> 
play record, but it's not, that's not really, it's not Billy Bragg's fault. No, not that, no. Nah. He's written some good tunes, old Billy Bragg. Yes. That's one of them. Yeah. Waiting for the great leap forward. What station are we on? XFM 104.9. Yeah, with Carl Pilkington. Carl, what do you think of it so far? Well, I've worked this you, today. You, you weren't up for it, weren't it? And now it's turned out great, and you're, are you, you a little bit happier? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's good, yeah. Good. Just talking earlier about teachers, weren't they? Have you got any amusing anecdotes about teachers or anything around that subject? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go to school that much. Uh, go on. When I did, it was, uh, I was talking to Suzanne about it the other day, how, how, you know, she goes out with me now and she thinks I'm, you know, I'm great. She's, she's, yeah. she's lucky what she's got. So. <laughs> no, no, she's done well. Yeah. Right? Um, but I, I was the sort of kid who she would have hated at school because, I never had, like, a pen. Oh, yeah, I know what the oh. story was. Never a pencil case or any stuff. I'd start off the, the, the like, the term I would. I'd yeah. have, like, you know, a, a brand new carrier bag with me stuff in. <laughs> a brand new yeah. carrier bag. Classy. classy. And, uh... Well, you got to have somewhere to <clears throat> put the stuff you've nicked from Woolworths in, haven't you? <laughs> right, so, <laughs> so that, that'd be there. But then by the time, like, a couple of weeks down, I'd, I'd put my pen down, I would have lost it, and mm. then I'm sort of going around saying, can I borrow a pen? You didn't try sticking it up your nose, it's not still lodged up there. <laughs> it's not, it's not, no, mm. no. Well, the, the the funny thing with like you know you were talking about teachers and stuff. Were you disruptive? Were you a disruptive kid? Were not you really. Causing trouble? No, not really. That no, was he wouldn't cause trouble. He's terrified of the boss here, isn't he? No, it's not that. It's just that. What's the point in winding people up? I find it quite annoying if people do that. So <laughs> I, I don't wish it upon anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you wind Steve up then? Sometime? I don't wind him up. You I do. Don't you have done, but no, come on, let's, let's let's not let's not argue. We're getting on well then. Come on, Carl. And like the teachers, because I'd lived on this estate, right? Loads of stuff used to get nicked and go missing and. What have you? Blackboards, and desks. And their way, no, like the telly the in the video. Telly video oh, really? and stuff like oh. that. And, uh, the projector thing and all that. Mm. So, the way they used to try and find it, right, my little conspiracy, because you know I'm good at them. Yeah, you, well, yeah, yeah. Um, what they used to do is set your own work and say, right, draw like a bird's eye view of your house. <laughs> Right? <laughs> but draw everything you've got in your house <laughs> right. as well. So if you've got, I don't know, if you've got anything in the loft, make sure you draw it. Right. So people with kids would come in with overhead projectors. Well, that's th that was the idea, Chalk. I think, the idea. Guns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And the aircraft guns in the shed. So your, the picture you did at your, for your home, presumably- Got nothing from me. Nothing. I didn't no. do it. I didn't do it. I'm not, he used to hand it in empty house. I'm not a grass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And nor the illegal immigrants living in the Just kitchen. Just a picture of your auntie Nora. Yeah. What's that? Is that? Have you been, that have you been stealing tennis balls? Yeah. No, that's not a split tennis ball. <laughs> that's my auntie Nora. Uh, but what about all the stuff? What, didn't you have to draw all the stuff that your father had nicked? <laughs> 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 all the stuff, you know. Uh, yeah. Listen, listen, are we doing Songs of Phrase today? Because Rockbusters has gone. What Songs of Phrase again? I, I can't remember. I, tried yeah, to, I think I've blanked it out. Yeah. When we do, uh, something that's been said a few times on the show. Right. Right? Um, <laughs> it's been said a few times. Brack! I'm scared of Andrew Phillips! Brack! I need my job on it! Brack! Go on, sorry, you were speaking, Carl. <laughs> uh, so we take a phrase from the show, right, and just get songs like, the words from the songs, edit them together so something it says like, that for you. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, no, just go on, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on, Carl. Come on. Come so, on. are we doing it? <laughs> Sorry, uh, so, yeah, so what's the phrase you've come up with? The phrase is, um, found... <laughs> is, is no more Cheeky Freak of the Week. No more. No more Cheeky Freak of the Week? No is there not having, we're not having that anymore? Well, yeah. no, because it's offensive and if we're worried about offending people, to uh, talk about people with disabilities, well, like, yeah, well, that's, that's like conjoined twins and women who are uh, born with, like, um, deformed legs yeah, and you never, call them dog woman. It's so, uh, you know, you've got to be careful. You've already, you've already insulted Christ. Let's not do, uh, disability. Let's do, uh, Songs of Phrase, well, shall we? Cheeky Freak of the Week was never how to offend anyone. No. It was to make you no, realise We don't try and offend people, we try and entertain them. Right, do you know the funny <laughs> thing is, do you know the funny thing is, right, you're saying about, you know, being cruel about people and stuff. It goes on all the time. On the news the other night, you know those Siamese twins that didn't make it through the operation? Yes, yeah. Right? And this is why I'm stopping it, because I don't want people to think we're having a go at disabled people and sure. stuff. Right? On the news, right? Yes. Before that operation, the doctors said, we're gonna try and sort this out, all the doctors are gonna get their heads together. Is that a good phrase right. to use? Yeah. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Carl, play record. No, I'm play just- Play record. Oh. Are you offended, Rick? Are you- 
Oh, we've offended you, you're ready. You're the one that's... That's the... You've, you've offended Yeah, but I'm saying, we're not out to offend anyone yet. It's always going on. People well, are always on the go. Well, say, please don't bring it down. Play a record. No. Uh, oh, I ate it. I ate it. Darkness. Growing on me. You love the darkness, don't you? Yeah. I was lucky enough to see him. They were doing I like the film as well. Is People told me it's a bit, it's a bit too jokey or yeah. a bit too tongue in cheek, but it isn't really. If you don't know that, it sounds great. Ooh. It just sounds like sort of retro seventies rock. It's, yeah. oh, it's great. I think it's brilliant. It's nice to have rock back. I think you'll agree. B big time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> High five, man. High five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet, sweet mix, sweet. Um, songs of phrase. It's the mighty return of songs of phrase. No one has uh, requested that. It's no. not, not, not due to public opinion. <laughs> 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 a lot of people have requested some swearing. They have indeed. But a lot, we had a lot of emails for that, but go on, Carl. And uh, <laughs> remind us again what exactly songs and phrases is and why we should care. It's just a phrase <laughs> that we took from the show, make up by taking words out of a song, edited it together, right? <laughs> the phrase that we're doing is no more Cheeky Freak of the Week. No more Cheeky Freak it of the Week. It sounds like this. No more Cheeky Freak of the Week. <laughs> right, so... No, that's not like, impossible. Play again, got, you play got again, I didn't hear that. You got to email in with all the songs that you can hear there, right? There's, I think there's five songs And we just want the names of the songs? Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Alright. Do we just hear it again? No more Right. Yeah, it's it is good. It's probably one of the best you've done. It's very tricky though. There's a, I mean, uh, uh, that's not too tricky. Play it again. No more How many have you got? Do you think, Rick? Just uh, uh, well, I've I've noticed the same person singing twice. Is that a, right? In a band and solo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, and I know one I track think straight away I, from the word. Can I just say I do think naming the, the songs is a bit tricky. Let's just name the artists. Is that right? Just the artists. Just the artists. Just change the rules slightly. Yeah. Um, before we play it again, just let you know what the prizes are. We've got on DVD later with Jules Holland louder. Lots of the alternative acts he's had on there. Brilliant. Um, a DVD. Of that couple of DVDs all, with Boogie Boogie right? Piano over the top. <laughs> Let's hope so. Brilliant. I can't. We can't Jesus wait. Mary on there. Stereophonics. We've got Sonic Youth, Ash, Hole, Queens of the Stone Age, Foo Fighters. Quite good. Um, once again, Cruise of the Gods on DVD starring Rob Brydon and Steve Coogan. That was on at Christmas. It's not bad. It's not the um, same one. They, they haven't been sending that back. <laughs> We've been giving out different ones each we week. Have indeed. Uh, this is an album just called quite simply "I Love You," yeah. and you'll be pleased because there's the likes of Mel C, Cliff Richard, and the Hollies on there. Brilliant. Excellent. The best chill out album ever. We've got the Beach Boys on there. Elvis Costello, Pink Floyd, Coldplay. That's not bad. And this is the one that's most interesting. I think the American Song Poem Anthology. I've not heard it yet, but apparently, I think what it is is an anthology of um, recordings that were made apparently in the, I think maybe fifties or sixties America. You could there was a particular organisation you could send in songs or lyrics that you'd written at home, and they would. Oh, it to music and record it for you and this is a compilation of them so obviously it's there's some quite uh, idiosyncratic and odd little things on there i think it's probably worth a listen so not bad prizes at all carl let's play it again no more well that's we got we started that going just the artists <laughs> then ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk once more carl no more See, we're just great. Yeah, not bad at all. A little bit of elbow. Nice to hear that again. This is the one red. XFM 104.9. Look at your name. Sure, 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 sure. Elbow and uh, red. Good tune. The old Spanish archer. Alright? Yeah, elbow. No, sorry, you've lost me. I wasn't listening. Elbow. Elbow. Alright. <laughs> Sony award winning. from <laughs> Ricky Gervais. <laughs> well, we're not allowed to do anything. Sure, it's a bit uh, Andrew likes those sort of things. Like. <laughs> uh, Rick, um, I can tell you now that the the answers to songs of phrase are quite literally dribbling in. <laughs> uh, I think there's two, may maybe three answers so far. So uh, very excited about that. And uh, we just an email from Dan. He says, "My Mrs. Lynn is pregnant and is eight days overdue." Uh, Carl, could you offer any words of encouragement to coax the baby down the birth canal? I've sat Lynn only inches away from the speaker to allow optimum audio transfer to the uterus. What would you say to that uh, child there, just to lure it out to the wide world, Carl? I wouldn't know, I wouldn't rush out, to be honest. <laughs> right. It's not good, is it? Out here. Sure. And I don't really want to talk about kids either, because Suzanne's mates just had one and now she wants one. Oh, God. Yeah. Please never bring a child into the world, Carl. Promise us that. <laughs> they just bore me. Have you seen, there's loads of people in the office who have got them now and they've all got baby pictures everywhere and they're all like, isn't it nice looking? It's like, no, it's not. They all look the same. Do you know Mal, what I mean? All like Mel Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's that theory, actually, right? Do you know how I've said before about babies 
Right, yeah. alright, little old people. Yeah. There was, uh... <laughs> no, <laughs> another of the great theories. <laughs> no, no, the fact that, you know, you're born, and you sort of, you know, you got no teeth, you got a little bald head, you yeah. can't control your your bodily functions and that. Yeah. Sure. Then you get to like... Sorry, you're describing yourself. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying, you've got a dangerous no, ground I'm just saying, you? that's how you're born. Yep. Then you get to about 70 or whatever. Yeah. Well, that starts to happen again, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. Now, there was a story in America about, just backing this up again, 70-year-old fella. 70-year-old fella, okay. Li little bald head. Yeah. Right? Probably no teeth. No. Nah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Uh, nappy and that, right? Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> goes, yeah. goes into, uh, seventy year olds put, pop, pop the old nappy on on your 70th birthday, take your teeth out. Goes into an off-licence to get some beer, doesn't get served because they didn't think he was old enough. Right. What? Okay. <laughs> right, okay. Wait, 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 right, wait, wait, Carl, wait. Carl's back. Carl's back. Wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. Okay. They, so they thought he was right, a okay, giant forget baby it. that right. walked into forget the off-licence. Forget it. Steve, forget it. Carl, please. Forget I need it. Carl to answer. No, that, that, I mean, that's a story, but it's weird, isn't it? That's well, what I'm true. saying, it just backed up. The so guy in off-licence thought that a giant baby <laughs> that had waddled <laughs> into the A 70-year-old wrinkled baby in an overcoat, <laughs> stuck in Werther's original, smoking a pipe and going, I can't believe it, the price is not the same as they were, right, was a small child. Well, yeah, weird, isn't it? Player record, you're an idiot. Well, what's happening with Songs of Phrase? Forget it. Just... Uh, Forget well, it, no, as, I say, um, as I say, the answers, um, are, are dribbling in and, um, can I'm we, sure Can we run them. this radio station for a week? Yeah, but the thing is, if we genuinely wanted to do a good job at that, we'd have to fire ourselves straight away. No, do you know what I mean, though? Just uh, sort out the playlist, let DJs, you know what I mean? Sort out the, what can be said and what can't. Just for one week. Yeah, see if we can uh, give it a bit of, uh, shall we? Well, what would you do? I don't know, just the phrase pissing in the wind would be to you. I know, yeah. Well, we're, we're, are we going to even meet this week? Because it's, you know, we've wasted time pre-recording stuff that we can't put out. I don't know if it's worth- He's still on that. He is still on it. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I've let it go, but he's still on it. What else is on the list? <laughs> what list? <laughs> on the list, I said to you yesterday, let's sit down and have a chat. I yeah. thought, I threw that stuff? away, I thought it was just a piece of crap. <laughs> there you, go. you can't say crap! <laughs> You're saying You should have bleeped that. I know, why don't you bleep that? Why don't we, why don't we pre-record the whole show, then we only have to come in once? What do you think of that, Carl? Carl? Whatever. Carl? Steve, what Carl. are we doing with I seriously think Carl. if we put out last week's show, would anyone know? Carl. 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 Play a record, he's driving me mad Carl. Now, Carl. Carl. Seriously, he's driving me mad. Carl. Press the button. Carl. Carl. I'm sick of it. Carl. 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 <laughs> Black Rebel Merch Title Club. Stop. On XFM. 104.9. I reckon we could run it for a week, just to do, just to do a few Did little things. Do you want to bother though? No, but I mean, just like, you know, have a look at the playlist a little bit. Yeah, get yeah. Some... Another phrase, polishing a turd. <laughs> I think that's just no one that springs to mind. You, know? you don't say that, Carl? What, turd? Yeah. <laughs> I think so, that's alright. Well, right. you said it, so you're the producer. No, that's <laughs> alright. Alright? Yeah. I'll tell you, I've got it together. Capital. Oh, no, that's a classic station. I was, I came in in the week to just check Carl out if he was here, he wasn't, he was out for about a, an hour or so. And, um, I heard in the lift, I don't know what sort of DJ it was on, uh, he just went and, uh, He's talking about that little girl, Summer, who, uh, went missing, but then she was just found reading the book. And I yeah. swear, right, I, I swear, he went, uh, and there's a lovely, uh, lovely picture of her there, just, uh, just reading the book. So, uh, what a happy ending. It's a shame they don't all end like that. Oh, God. And he played a record. What's his point? Unbelievable. I mean, what's that? I don't know. <laughs> it's those people who think that they're being a little, what, a little bit philo philosophical? Yeah! Profane. And then just everyone goes, oh. oh. Thanks very much. Oh. Yeah. I noticed in the, uh, the story of Summer, the little girl that went missing, I don't know if you re read that it, it mentioned her, f her family. Now, it mentioned the, the father of the house. I don't know if it's her father or certainly the guy, that, the, the parent, the, the male parent. And it was like, it was something like, I, I figure, I don't want to, you know, libel him, but it was something like Paul 24 and he's a graphic designer, recently changed his name to Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder what, what exactly is that? How, how is he, how is, uh, what family he, is that, uh, really? Uh, yeah. You know, I don't uh, want to. I'm always a little bit worried about people who change their well, names adults, to so much, to so much really, really cool. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, 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 Kevin Smethurst isn't, you know, it's not sexy enough. Exactly, exactly. So I call myself Clint Iron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what would you call yourself? I mean, Carl Pilkington, nothing wrong with that. It's quite a superhero's name. Well, it's when, Pilkington. When I was about seven, I wanted to be called Brett. 
Yes, yes. Why I, see why. I don't know, I just had a mate who was called Brett and I thought, that sounds good, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. But then, I'm quite happy with my name now. Because Carl, Carl, I have to Carl say, Carl where, does, where does that come from, Carl? Because it's, it's quite a rare I name. told you, didn't it? My mum had a dream. I forget this. What? Your mother had a dream? She, uh, she wasn't well. She had pneumonia or something, oh right? Dear. And, uh, she had this dream while she was pregnant. That's some doctor, sort of, you know. She was going off to another place, she was gonna die or something, and this doctor went, I can sort this out, I, can, uh, I don't know what I do here. And, uh, she remembers on his name badge, it said Carl. Really? So when she had me, she said, right. Call him Carl. Doctor. Doctor Carl. Calling yeah. Dr. Pilkington. Calling Dr. Pilkington. She hoped, I imagine, that you'd grow up to be like him, in every way. I've Saving done lives. I've done alright for myself, I think. Sure. I'm yeah. alright. Yeah. This is what we were talking about, actually, weren't we? We were talking about the fact that, uh, you're quite proud of the fact that you, you, you've got no formal education, really. And yet you've pulled yourself up with the bootstraps? Yeah, well, well, well I know, I know people who've got results from that and don't do, don't do anything. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Go on the street. So yeah. I've used all my energy as I've got older rather than burning myself out as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> so I don't know if, if that's advice. Is that, should we advise that to, <laughs> to young kids like that? <laughs> don't take exams, don't work at school. Just, uh, you know, move away from Manchester and get a job on XFM. <laughs> They'll employ anyone. Yeah, you get an hour's lunch break, you're away by quarter to six. You need, and, uh, you need no qualifications and to work Because you, you don't have to think for yourself, because your boss tells you what to do. You can have some time off to go yeah. shopping yeah. for Hobbs and yeah. shower units. He's alright, he's a good boss. Yeah, I know. He'll let me have next, next Saturday off. He knows how tired he is. How that. many Saturdays does he have off? He's going away again. I mean, he's had two holidays. He gets 26 holidays, 20 days, six days a year. Mm. 26 days a year. It's unbelievable. Yeah, he, he, he was sick because he put on wet trousers. Yeah. And now you're going down to Hastings. Are you leaving early because you left early last time, didn't you? No, no, I wouldn't do that again. Now, what are you going to Hastings for? Just having a break. Listen, yeah. though, we were talking about depressing news. <laughs> right? And with that kid and what have you. Yeah. You see that thing in the week, there was, there was three bits of depressing news, yeah. right? There was one, an old woman who swallowed a fork. <laughs> <laughs> an old woman who swallowed a fork? Yeah, did you see She's that? dead, the dork. She's an old woman swallowed a fork, so what did she, she swallowed she, a spoon? Why did she, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 she swallowed a spoon to, yeah, what did she swallow a fork? Yeah. What's her name? She, uh, swallowed a cockroach. Right. Sorry, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is, this, is this the old rhyme Sorry, now? Sorry, is this or... a rhyme that you've got slightly wrong? No, 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 you've no, changed, no, you've changed dog happened. for fork. <laughs> this is the truth, is it? This is yeah. what you read. Oh, right. no, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Don't never confuse the two. <laughs> this is what you read on the spurious website so that, or that, some that mentalist right. email. Sorry, just, just before you move on from that, there was an old woman, there was an old woman who swallowed a cockroach. Yeah. And to, in order to get the cockroach out, she what, she swallowed a fork? It doesn't rhyme, but it's good. She, um, she <laughs> tries to get it out. Uh, with a fork? She went, what well, for God, she, I'm, I'm thinking she's in a kitchen. Yeah. That'll do. She grabs that, she tries to get it out, and she lets go of it. And, and it goes, swallows a fork? Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was in the paper. The terrible thing was, it was a gardening fork. <laughs> it was, it was awful, you know. What, what, or is that, or is that stupid? That'd be stupid if it was a gardening fork, wouldn't it? I'll tell you what annoys me though with things like that. Me? In the paper, it was what you do, and everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> you honestly, no. Right? You, you do me adding. People, uh, the way people say it must be great working with him. <laughs> must be brilliant. No, it's not, that. it's a nightmare. It is a nightmare. Get on, get on with it, get on with it. I can't be bothered now, let's just play some. Carl, 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 because I, you know, I want it. I'm yeah. interested. I'm interested. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. I am. Look, come back after this. No, 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 let me finish, finish the story. Come on. Long links. Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> tell you in a minute. Oh. I'm getting annoyed. I'm getting so angry. <laughs> Alright, I'm the player, I've got to look at this. <laughs> Perth and lucky man. That's for Carl, who is a lucky man. Two hours every Saturday, yeah? Just a little bit of chat and laughter. Some great records. Alright? What are you going to Hastings for? Just to chill out? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Just chill out. <laughs> <laughs> what specifically is in Hastings that's of interest to you? Are they having another battle? Nothing, it's just cheap, isn't it? You can get a B&B &B for about 40 quid. Sure. The weather's good, so... Well, it's all good. Why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Do you want Ricky to come down with it? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Now you were going to tell us something before we started winding you up. Um, what were we talking about? Uh, we were talking about the old man who was mistaken <laughs> for a small <laughs> child. It was actually, yeah, the 70 year old who they thought was underage. Right, so we went, then we got on to, right, so the old woman, I was saying, ec, ec, yeah, yeah, she, uh, she ate a cockroach. 
Right? She ate a cockroach, yes, yeah. by mistake. How did she eat a cockroach? Why was there a was cockroach? It, it was she was cleaning up, it jumped in her mouth. <laughs> right. so, so she immediately, the first thing she did was immediately grab a fork and plunge that down her throat. Yeah. And well, that maybe not immediately. I mean, she tried other methods. She tried plastic spoons, her fingers, maybe washing it out, maybe going, <coughs> oh, I nearly swallowed a cockroach. Did she try that one? <coughs> oh, oh, ugh, how horrible. Right, so right. anyway, the, the fork went down. Yes. And it's got this picture in the paper of, like, the x-ray. And you can see, see the fork just, like, going across like that. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's mad, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, it, well, it was, it, where well, the fork was in her abdomen, was it? Uh, in that yeah, x-ray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you sure she swallowed it? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure she didn't just say that to the doctor. Like, How did it get in there? <laughs> Have you got a fork inside you? No, it? I know what you get. Yeah, because I remember uh, years ago. Do you know uh, Doctor Steele? Do on, I know uh, Doctor Steele? Yeah, on uh, it does. Is, is it, it in, the one on um, Richard and Judy? Right. What's he? A psychiatrist or the resident doctor? He just pops in. Is that sort problem? of like the suave sort of? He's not that. He's not that. Sort I know what you mean. Yeah, just a normal doctor fella. Sure. And. um yeah, this was like in the 90s, and uh, Rich and Judy said, we got the doctor in the day, uh, again today, uh, we're looking at things that, you know, have been inside people, and there's this one, right, a fella comes on, uh, with an x-ray, yeah. it's sat on a pint glass. Well, it's sat on a pint glass? Well, that's, yeah. that's what- He hadn't had it. Ah, oh, it's sat on a pint glass. I remember- I, I remember that story that, uh, was published, uh, about the bloke, and uh, this is the excuse he gave, um, to a doctor when he had to go and have something removed. It was, um, uh, a bottle of, sort of, HB sauce or something up his, uh, what word can we say in case well, Andrew's this You don't need to, you know, people know what you're saying. Okay. Right. Um, rectum. Is that right? Well, he didn't need to say it, but. Well, no, he might as well, it's a medical term, isn't it? Doctors anyway. say rectum, don't they? Anyway. Um, so, uh, the doctor got it out, and the excuse, he said, he said uh, he'd been shopping, been the safe ways, he bought his shopping home, <laughs> and, uh, he popped the shopping on the, uh, <laughs> on the, uh, front step, um, and he realised he's locked himself out, so he started to shimmy up the drain pipe, um, but his trousers and pants fell down. <laughs> while he was climbing, and he slipped and fell on the HP sauce <laughs> bottle. Right? And, and that was the note thing, right? And the, the doctor had put at the bottom on his notes, this would be somewhat more believable if Safeway sold their HP sauce with condoms already attached. 